Hi folks, we have reached round 3 in the World Cup and we are going to focus uh, this time mainly on the match between Slovenia and Norway. So Norway uh, pretty strong, has uh, some players uh, of course from outside of Norway, basically it's a kind of a joint uh, Northern Europe, but it's spread into two teams, it's uh, just looking at the names, uh, difficult to say whether Norway A is even better than Norway B, they both have some strong players. And uh, yeah, none stronger than uh, Chrissy, who is a real Stark specialist, and he's going to play this opening game against Sara, both playing Stark Crossing, so let's uh, play it. This is a recording, of course, of game one of this match, so none have been played yet. And uh, I do know the result, but uh, uh, let's uh, watch it anyway. So, uh, we did some testing for this one. The decks are nearly identical. I won't show them to you. I think you know them by now. Uh, except for uh, some of the, well, a few choices here and there with characters. They're mainly identical, but uh, yeah, not exactly the same. And uh, a few plots. Uh, so, we know Sara uh, likes to play the Withering Cold opening, which she didn't in the previous round against Stark, because uh, there was so much Intimidating Stand on the other side as well. And in Stark Crossing, well, uh, Chris's deck only has one Grey John, so there is some advantage to playing Withering Cold and getting Intimidate. Uh, we had a few successful games with that in testing, but you do need to see those cards early on. And, uh, well, this setup, I've said this before, but the Iron Throne shows a card being set up in Shadows. I don't think it should do that. Both players should, should do their setups without additional information. Now, uh, Sara setting this up can can guess that there's a mirror in shadows for what that's worth. I don't know if it affects her setups or not. Uh, so there's uh, three mi uh, three or two two or three mirrors. Uh, I'm not sure. And uh, there is actually also Rick in Chris's deck, which we found out pretty late in testing. I played the the Norway side in testing for a few games and uh, never had Rick until the last one. So. Um, Yeah, he's uh, worth considering, so just to, just so you don't walk into him uh, by mistake. Basically, he's the only House Bolton character, I think, so he needs to attack on the Intrigue Challenge to steal a character, and then, yeah, in this matchup, probably very difficult to trade him back as the opponent, because uh, it's so easy to play around. And uh, no Withering Cold opening, Sara goes for Winter Festival instead, so it looks like she doesn't actually have uh, a Grey John or anything that uh, helps with the Withering Cold, I am no one for instance. And Mira in Shadows, I think this is the only Shadow character on this side. And uh, Chrissy opens Wardens, uh, which is interesting, so... Um, that's a, a way to cheat Rick into another challenge. So basically with Warden's Revealed you need to play around all of them. And it's uh, potentially a problem. Because you might be then playing around every challenge and uh, then it turns out to be Mira. Yeah. Which isn't great. Okay, so we have Septa with Sansa. Sansa now has Renown. We have Osha as well, who can uh, do a challenge and remove herself, so triggering crossing shouldn't be a problem. And if it's Mira and Shadows, she can blank Rick, but now Sarah spends the gold. No passing played. So, no huge swarm on either side. Chrissy plays Sansa as well. No Septa, so she doesn't have Renown. And Rick costs 2, so does Mira. So, if you want to use the card in Shadows, you need to leave 2. And he marshals Mira, so that's a, a bit of a spoiler now. It seems very unlikely that uh, it would be Mira in Shadows. It has to be Rick at this point. And yeah, he's a bit of an obstacle you have to now play around him constantly. So if you just kneel out your board, kneel three characters, then uh, 
Uh, you might be able to take something. No nightmares in the deck for that one gold. Yeah, we figured uh, there was um, a, a good sign in Slovenia ahead of this game, so uh, we had uh, briefly summer weather, 29 degrees Celsius, and then uh, two days later it was minus one, which is, uh, well, I read online 26 degree drop, so um, I guess it was um, slightly warmer somewhere. Uh, or slightly less hot than uh, I figured, and they're saying it's a it's a record drop uh, over such a short time. So winter really did come back for a while, and uh, we're hoping that would bring us uh, some good uh, fortune for this game. So Ocean not removing herself from the challenge after nothing was declared. She just takes the unopposed, and now Sansa has the I am no one, which means uh, there will be three standing characters still for uh, Sarah here. Unless she wants to put an additional character into challenge just to make sure she wins. Problem is, uh, challenges can be, yeah, they can be uh, defended a little bit if uh, Chrissy wants to play defensively in round one because uh, there's no withering cold, you can kneel out your board, but uh, I think he's going for Rick and uh, hitting Arya, not bad. Uh, Sansa will be gaining the insight as well. Now what do you do here? She can attack for 8. And that should be enough. No, it shouldn't be enough because of the plot. So she needs to attack with Baron and Scout to get the crossing and the... Uh, well, superior claim depends on defense. But then how do you deal with Rick? Why she attacks alone? Chrissy doesn't bother, he's going to attack back. And here comes the superior claim, now was that worth it? That's uh, 8 power plus winter festival to come, that's dangerously close. So he needs to get some power of his own, which he could, to be fair. Yeah. Every challenge basically needs to be opposed now. Have to defend with Septa. And then Chrissy can use Wardens to put another character in if he likes. Does he care? No, he needs the characters for the power challenge, I think. Get the crossing back. So here comes the military. He's gonna stealth the Bear Island Scout. That means if Sarah wants to really play around Rick, she has to... Um, has to stand Osha, right? The problem is... Uh, Rick coming in takes uh, Septa Mordain and then Sarah's Sansa loses it now and... Uh, yeah, the other sons of on Chris's side gains renown from that. That's uh, that's not brilliant. So a bit of a waste of the armory, but okay. And Chris is going to do this one to get the military claim. Do you claim Osha or do you claim the standing Bear Island Scout? Mm, claim Zosha. Of course, Sansa's strength goes down, so now 
battle and scout is needed to defend against crossing. And yeah, and you need to defend with both to force a trick to come out. Reveal himself. It's if it's Mira, then Chris is not even winning this challenge. Oh, actually, he yeah, no, he isn't because Mira is already in place. So can't that anything uh, would have to be Rick, and he has to be spent as well. And now he's there for everyone to see, and uh, honestly, can't be cheated into another challenge anymore. So. Not such a big threat, and he doesn't have any renown of his own, didn't win by enough to get superior claim, so he's only up to two. So in testing it proved that um, games always finished in round three, and if you couldn't win in round three as first player, then the game was lost for you. That was basically it. And uh, often it, it just came down to whoever won initiative in round 3, which both, both players have plots with 7. There's some king's roads, but they rarely stay in, in play. Usually you want to spend them for the tempo. So 7, and then whoever is slightly behind it, if it's 10-9, the player with 9 power is uh, has a huge advantage uh, for that closing round, potentially. But here there's quite a gap. The Harry situation is not great for either one. So Sarah has everyone survive. Chrissy will would lose something, right? Yeah, would lose at least one character. And the crown situation, yeah, he could play the crown. Lose nothing. And at the same time, Sarah could play the crown because that stops Mira escaping the board potentially. She, uh, with Winter Festival, she could go back to Shadows and blank uh, the Renown on Sansa, maybe. So both play the crown in the end. And that gives some advantage to Chrissy because he wins initiative. Now, what does he want to do here? Go second, survive, get some power back, and then be still be lower on power, right? For the final round, win initiative and win from there. That's the plan, I guess. Although, might need to invest quite a lot to stop Sarah going from 9 to 15 because now there's. Uh, Renown on Sansa and the crossing threat and King's Road. Well, that means that uh, Palace of Sorrows and Fallen from Favor would be 8 initiative and win against anything Chrissy can play without the King's Road. So, is it worth just leaving it? Depends what she has for the gold. So, 2 for Mira and then 4 for the rest, while Chrissy will swarm a bit more. So. Looks difficult, honestly, to get a huge advantage, yeah, so she spends it, and spends it on the Loyalist. How about we get a Daisy? I think this is the only printed renown for Sarah. Is there maybe a copy of, of Small John? Uh, Chrissy has a bit more, definitely has Small John, and I think he has three copies of Sir Jason Malister, who at the moment actually, well, okay, he virtually always has it now, so there could be stuff in Shadows, but then, of course, his ability clears that out. Oh, and uh, Sar plays some reducers, and Daisy and Daisy strength now even bigger with those reducers in play. And now Mira to blank her. Ah, uh, but here comes the passing.
Verehrte User. Is it going to find Daisy? Of course. Keeps Daisy in hand. Wants to go for more characters. Now if Daisy comes in, she would be on 11 strength or something. That's uh, some crazy strength. But very blankable. And now actually, Sara doesn't have that much um, stuff to blank here with uh, with her Mira. She can blank Rick so that you don't have to play around him. She can blank Mira who has stealth. She can blank her own Sansa to get plus one strength. I've seen that done in the past. Was, uh, yeah, walked into that trap. It's not something you think about. Okay, so let's see. Septa wastes the military challenge. Uh, the intrigue challenge, I should say. I guess the Bell and Scout will waste the military challenge. Unless Mira wants to come in right now. And then you can do a big crossing. So power claim and crossing is 11. Sansa and Daisy are 13. And superior claim would be 15, right? Question is, does she, does she have all of that? If she does, then... Uh, there's no hand judgment or anything, so that's, I think, a guaranteed win. Then the play is really to bring Mira out and uh, just use her for the military since she doesn't have a power icon. Would be 25 on power. Yeah, more than enough actually. Whatever she does, she has more than enough to to trigger superior claim. Question is, is it in hand? And judging by all of this thinking, I'm guessing no. That changes things a little bit because um, You have to think, okay, I'm not getting to 15, so how can I stop Chrissy being on the verge of victory? Because he has initiative next round, and if he could get to something like 7, going from 7 to 15 with such a wide board is more possible. Although, slight problem for him is, of course, that uh, he doesn't have any of the renowned characters. Dace is in hand, and there's no... Uh, Malister, no great uh, small John number. Well, if you can't get to fifteen, then I would say just. Grab the Renown, right, on the power challenge, crossing claim Renown. You'll be on 13 and then, even if you lose initiative, you can try to defend the opponent getting to 15 power, surely. If she passes here, then she's in the same spot next round, to having to go from 9 to something big. That's, uh, if she can do it now, well, how could she do it next round any easier?
leaves this out. So this is enough to trigger crossing for sure. But if everything defends, or at least most, then superior claim is not possible. Clearly she doesn't have it because it's it's guaranteed. So she would attack with everything. Chrissy uh, realizes this, so defends with the minimum. And that's 12 power. Dice is still there. And Rick is still there. So now what? So Rick can take Septa at this point. Hmm. Yeah, you can bring... I mean, he's not going to attack again. So Mira can defend this challenge and then it's not unopposed, right? So it doesn't necessarily need to blank Rick. You could blank Rick and then just leave it. Yeah, or you could blank Mira to get rid of her stealth on the military challenge, then all of them are not actually strong enough to beat Daisy. Yeah, she blanks Mira. So now you'd have to do power first to, to beat Daisy on the military and get the crossing there. But if you do power first, then they're also not strong enough to beat Daisy. So I think uh, you have to waste one challenge into Daisy now to give her renown and then you take crossing with the power challenge, right? Loses the King's Row, that's uh, probably not the best thing to lose at this point. Because if it's Palace next round, then Chrissy has slightly more characters at the moment. Attacks. Mm, power for five. But it attacks with two characters. So that one gold could be played, uh, could be used for playing Wolf in the Night. But actually, you need a single attacker and then. Uh, Sansa is not actually big enough. Would get to seven. So I don't think you can lose this on defense. I think Daisy can defend. Then Chris is not winning a power challenge. Is not uh, Daisy still getting to thirteen with uh, renown on defense. Uh, just making sure of um, the wolf in the night situation there. <laughs> yeah, that means Chrissy honestly is not nowhere near being able to win with uh, just playing Palace. He's on one, he's going to get the crossing on the military here. And dominance, so... He'll be up to 4, 13-4. Well, from 4 to 15, you'd need Daisy and Jason and uh, some armor is there, I think. And 3 cards in hand, 4 after Ghost draws. Presumably no superior claim. I wonder if it, if it was maybe more important here to to get the power back. I mean, something will actually now have to die, right? Because of the crown. And, ooh, Amber Loyalist dies. That that uh, takes the cards. Greywind and Donela. Greywind, the wolf. The attachment could be used to cancel Mira. Can, uh, blanking dice in next round, that could have been useful. But it was actually her choice, so it looks like the, the last card is uh, her best. And Chris is up three characters, if Palace is played now. Any other plot of his loses initiative, so... I think that's game loss for sure, because even though you can defend single challenges, especially if Dace is blanked... Um, 
you can't defend uh, surely against the, the crossing or maybe you could you defend against the crossing with uh, with palace with everyone on three strength well both players play time for wolves so uh, things are assumed that uh, Chrissy would play the seven initiative plot otherwise this is just a win if she played uh, well honestly palace doesn't even suit her that much just uh, if she just played uh, fallen from favor here and sacked one of the reducers Uh, the problem with uh, Palace, you can have more characters, but if you're a second player, there is also stealth to consider here. The moment it's uh, only on Mira, but uh, Arya, of course, prominent in the deck as well. Jojen Reed, I think Asar actually plays two or three Jojens. She's a big fan of Jojen. So Chrissy has won initiative with this one from uh, the wolf plot decides that Sara can go first, which is basically a concession that he cannot win as first player, like we said. So his only chance now is to stop everything, and then uh, counter for some more power and then play Palace. And uh, he brings in the Great Wind to mess with the, the Mira situation. Yeah, the Iron Throne is not very nice uh, when both mirrors try to trigger at the same time, doesn't really tell you what you're supposed to click on. Um, wants Sarah's mirror to stay in play and uh, his own mirror to go back to hand to blank uh, to shadows to blank something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, Sarah, what did she do with the plot Summer to take Osha back? Okay. So, just looking for more characters at this point because uh, the Amber Loyal is discarded two cards earlier. Yeah, but King's Road could have been okay, I think. So she's on 13 and she has two Renown in play. So any kind of uh, win, power challenge win where they're both in, well, power claim would be enough anyway. So any power challenge with one of the renowns or uh, both renowned characters getting their power in the same challenge or even crossing plus one of the renowns or crossing plus power claim. I mean, these combinations all work. Ooh, and uh, finds a lady as well. Puts her on uh, Daisy, of course, because if she's blanked, she will still have her, uh, some strength. And uh, lady can be Moved on to Sansa, which stands her, so basically Sansa can uh, threaten her renown in two separate challenges now. Well, Chris's Daisy is going to be bigger when the other one is blanked. She's a, a big source of strength there, and he has... Uh, Greywind for stealth, Sarah discarded her Greywind to stealth past uh, Daisy, but I think Chrissy has to do pre-challenges actions now because uh, if Caitlyn is in a challenge then it's too late to do stuff, the question is can Sarah win with uh, doing a power challenge without stealth? I don't think so, so it's not a big threat. Blanks, they see anyway, which makes it easier. Actually, I think he could have waited a little bit. It wasn't uh, so necessary, but now means Daisy doesn't have renown, so we have to get it uh, with Sansa. And I think it should be easy enough, right? Simply doing it on the Intrigue, that's the, the strongest icon at the moment, because uh, it comes with Mira stealth as well. So we can waste two challenges. Chris is not going to get to 15 on defense, even if he has some kind of superior claim on the power challenge. And then the intrigue should be the safe crossing challenge on this occasion. Probably, can she do power on the crossing challenge instead? I count 20.
well, probably just just misses out a little bit on the on being able to win the power challenge if uh, none of the power icons are nailed for Chrissy. So that's uh, Summer wasted here. Actually, Sarah has one go left. Wonder if uh, that's for something because uh, oh, for Lady, of course. Yeah, I was going to say if uh, one of the reducers was still standing, then you could do power. Yeah, anything that doesn't have an intrigue icon can go into this power challenge. Of course, uh, Chrissy to already have to defend a little bit. Put Sans uh, in because she stands anyway. Now Daisy is on zero strength. Daisy not in the challenge. Could have put both in and then. Yeah, it doesn't make a difference. It's still plus two strength, whoever it's on. Well, if this is not properly defended, that's already game. I think Daisy needs to defend. And she does. And now no huge uh, mystery about what's coming next. And the problem, additional problem is also Caitlyn is going into this challenge, so anything you could have had in hand, which honestly there's nothing in the deck from uh, what I remember, but even in theory anything that was there is just um, now cannot be played. <laughs> and yeah. Crossing challenge and renown will do it, just about. So Sarah takes it. And uh, we take the lead against Norway in the Stark Mirror. I can tell you that uh, the second game that Sarah played is not going to be on my channel. I do have a recording, but without commentary. Uh, the, her favorite uh, match, of course, <laughs> Barra Kohor against Knights of Kraken. It was actually a, a pretty decent game, good effort, but uh, didn't manage to win in the end. So it's 1-1 after two games, and I believe we have game three of this panning on my channel so you can uh, watch that uh, very soon. So thank you for joining me on this one and see you next time.